All right, so this video is gonna be a little bit different. I'm gonna talk about the use reducer hook a little bit, but I'm really trying to address a question that one of my Discord users had, and he was really confused as to why, if you look at the reducer that we're declaring here, it's a function that takes in state as the first argument and action as the second argument. And he was really confused as to why you can't just say action comma state. Okay, so that's really what we're gonna talk about in this video. But I wanted to kind of explain functions and their interfaces and how it's important to like kind of a comply to like how the interface is defined, right? So first of all, let's talk about reducer, okay? So reducer is a way to basically create like a state machine in React. And you can use a reducer by basically using the use reducer hook. And the first argument requires a reducer function. And the second argument requires your initial state. So in our case, the initial state is going to be an object that has a count equal to zero. And the reducer is a function that basically is supposed to modify and change this state in some way as things or actions are dispatched. Okay, so hopefully you're not super confused. By now, I'm kind of confused myself. But the idea is that you have the ability to dispatch whatever you want. Like this is just a convention of type, but I could literally dispatch actions like this as strings. And my reducer can kind of dis discern the action here. So if I want to, I could probably put like, um, I, I can make this more explicit and type this stuff. Okay, but the idea is like this reducer function, it takes in the first argument is the current state of your reducer. And again, state will be changed over time. As your users are clicking through your buttons and doing things, your reducer state is going to change, but it's a way to basically, you know, self-contain and isolate a piece of state and some logic that's related to that state and have it all kind of encapsulated together, I guess. And then secondly, the action is what you can use to modify this state. So typically in this case, we have two action types. We have an increment and we have a decrement. And if someone does an increment, we basically return the current object, which will just be an object that has a count property plus equal to itself. And if you do decrement, we are going to return same count minus one. And then the default is going to be an error. So this is a switch statement. Hopefully you understand what a switch statement is, but basically you check the string here and you have some case statements that basically do different logic depending on what the type passed in was. Um, now, just to show you that this is just a convention with action.type, the reason we do this is so that sometimes you can pass in like a payload here. Like I say, like payload is 10, and then I could actually do something like state.count plus one plus uh, action.payload uh, if I wanted to. So that's the reason why we do this convention, but let me just also break this down a little bit further. I know I'm talking about the reducer, and I told you I was going to talk about something else, but I just want to make sure this is clear. So if I wanted to make the action an actual string, I can go down here and I could just go ahead and send in a string instead of that whole object, right? So you, you have the flexibility to choose what your um, actions are. And I think also here, like this initial state, we should probably say this is type of initial state so that we actually have some good TypeScript um, completion here. So with that being said, I think you can also put it here if you wanted to. Let's see, state and dispatch. All right, so it's always good to hover over your stuff and make sure your types are proper if you're using TypeScript. Um, but I have a lot of things I want to talk about in this video because I think the issue he was having could be simply solved by just using TypeScript to begin with. So instead of doing action.type here, I'll just do action. Um, same thing. It, it works the same way. The only thing is that like we chose to not have it be an object that we're passing for the dispatch here. We are just passing a string. Um, but anyway, this is all like besides the main point I'm trying to get at. Hopefully he understands a little bit better about how reducers are set up. His confusion is why can't the action come first? Okay, why can't I do that? Um, and I want to stress that if you're using TypeScript, it would warn you that you're doing something wrong, right? So in an interview, I believe he, I don't know if it was an interview or just on his self-study, he wasn't understanding why you can't just do the action first, right? And this all boils down to interfaces. The way this use reducer interface was set up is that it requires a function that takes in a state as the first parameter. Okay. So to kind of like break that down for him, like we can kind of imagine this as well. Let's say we had a function called um, print names. Okay. So I'm going to say function print names. And the first parameter of this function needs to be a number 
Oh, so I'm gonna say like how many names to print. I wanna make this the most verbose Java variable you can ever think of. And then the second argument is going to be the name, okay? So what we've done here is we just declared a function that has a particular interface, right? To, to use this function successfully without the application completely breaking, you have to pass in a number first. And then the second parameter has to be a string. And then inside this code, I could simply say like for let i equal zero, i less than how many names, i plus plus, and just say console log the name, okay? So this function, in order to use it, you, you have to comply by the interface that was defined for it. And it's the same thing with this reducer. React as a library def defines how this interface has to be, and you have to comply to it. And if you don't, it's just not gonna work, right? Stuff's just gonna break. So same thing here. If I were to go ahead and in this app when it first loads, I'm gonna go ahead and say um, print names, and I'll say Bob, and then I'll say tin. So in this example, notice that I'm using TypeScript and it's going to complain and say like, hey, you're not doing this correctly, um, which is great. This is another reason why you should probably just use TypeScript. It's super easy to just add types onto your parameters and it's going to help catch a lot of errors along the way. But let's say you decide that you don't want to add types to anything because uh, you like um, torturing yourself for some reason. Now this thing doesn't complain and this is going to actually not work the way you think it is, right? Because it's going to try to loop over this, which is going to be a string, which may or may not work. I don't think it's going to work. Um, if I go to the app, I think this should actually start throwing some errors. Uh, so let's just go to the console and let's just look at this. It doesn't even print out anything, right? So this thing doesn't work the way that you think it does. Um, and the reason is because this print names has a particular interface and you have to apply, you have to comply by the interface. So if I go ahead and add that back and add the name here as a number in string. Oh, I did it backwards. Let's just go ahead and do string and number. So now if we actually call this the correct way, notice that it does print out Bob 10 times. So the main takeaway is what I'm trying to say is like, to answer his question, the reason we can't pass action first is because React decided that their interface is going to take in a state first, and then the second argument is going to be an action. And there's nothing you can do to switch the order, right? It's the same way that we created print names. We, as developers, we defined it as taking a number first and then a string second. And if anyone in your application decides to try to swap those, everything's going to break because you have to follow the interface. So hopefully by watching this video, you understand a little bit about reducers and how they work. And then also understand like the importance of uh, the, uh, the importance of an interface, whether it's implicit or explicit. TypeScript makes interfaces a little bit more explicit. But if you're using JavaScript, you have implicit interfaces and you need to basically do that extra, you know, double, triple check to make sure you're passing the right types to your, your functions before they just randomly crash when you run your application. Um, but yeah, be sure to uh, like, subscribe, bell icon, comment, whatever, if you enjoyed watching this video. And also be sure to join my Discord if you want to talk to me directly or get feedback or try to get um, some help on a question you might have when you're dealing with React web development. We have a lot of people there who are willing to help out if you're stuck. Anyway, have a good day and happy coding.